Chelsea Lee. This is the Scribbled Bookcase, and today we're going to be doing a walkthrough of my War Binder, also known as a prayer journal, also known as a faith journal. In either case, this is a faith-centered video, so if that's not what you're into, that is completely okay. I encourage you to come back to my channel for bullet journal videos or book-related videos, but for now, I'll say goodbye. The rest of you, if you are a Christian, if you are completely new to Christianity, if you're just somebody who's curious and trying to seek and figure out where you lie on the faith spectrum, all of you are perfectly welcome. I'd love to share this with you. I actually began my journey only a year or two ago uh, when I met my boyfriend. He was the one who really introduced me to what Christianity can be. I am starting a new segment on my channel called Seeking Faith. I've already made one video of my boyfriend's war binder that I actually created for him and I got really positive feedback from all of you and I'm so gracious and so thankful that you all reached out to me and were so supportive and I did give him his war binder for those of you who've been following along and he loved it and it was so wonderful to see how it brightened his day and it was the first time that I told him that I do believe in Jesus and that I do want to keep pursuing Christianity and I know that meant a ton to him because like any person in a relationship where you have kind of different views in religion and you're trying to work that out it can be really difficult and so it, it's a really nice thing to know that we're starting towards the same path. And so I want to set that up front that that is where I'm coming from in my journey and I want you all to come into this seeking faith area with me at whatever stage you're in the journey. I don't believe in good Christians or bad Christians. I believe that we're all just at different stages in the journey and we're meant to help each other and so I hope that seeing me and where I'm at will help you guys and hopefully, you know, depending on where you're at and what you've learned thus far in your life, you can help me too. I don't have all the answers. I don't know every line in the Bible. I haven't even read the whole Bible. I'm still in the process of doing that. That's part of where my war binder comes in. But anything faith related, that's what I want to be doing here and I want to be starting conversations and not necessarily answering questions, but working through questions together. So I encourage you to join me in that journey and I'm going to just get right into my journal now and I hope you will enjoy. Alright, so here we are with my war binder. So I'm using the Recollections Planner from Michaels as my war binder, also as my bullet journal as you might have seen in some of my other videos. And these are, I believe, size A5, so it's like a personal size planner which is awesome because I can easily put this in my bag especially when I'm going to church. The other great thing as you'll see as I'm walking through about the Recollections Planner and the A5 size is the Recollections Planner actually has different inserts that you can buy. So they have ones for fitness, they have ones for meal planning, all that stuff which is great if you want to use them for a planner. But they also have one that is for spiritual. So the spiritual insert is just really great if you're just getting started with creating a war binder because it gives you a really nice place to begin. All right, so when I open it up, as you can see, it's a six ring binder and I have some flaps on the side. In here, I just keep two photos. That is me and my boyfriend and then my two puppies. Unfortunately, Rocky actually passed away this past summer, um, but I just like to keep these guys in here. Um, it's nice to have loved ones um, and those sorts of mementos in your war binder. Reminds you why you're praying and why life is so great. So I also have a lot of different prayer cards and different scripture cards in the pockets here. I can either use these in my own war binder or it's also nice to be able to give out to others. Here I put a little envelope on the side of the flap here with Bible promises. And so when I open this up, what I have in here are just these little Bible promise cards that look like this. And these are really nice, once again, not only to just be able to reflect on when I need to, but also to give out to others as I see fit. So I like to keep them in here as well. And this envelope did not come with the Recollections Planner, but it's something that I just 
kind of double sticky taped in here uh, for my own personal use. So do not be afraid uh, to add additions as time goes on to your war binder and really make it your own. Okay, so then I have this cover page and if you use the Recollections Planner and the Spiritual Insert, you will recognize perhaps the base of this cover page is in fact the cover of the Spiritual Inserts you can buy from Michaels. But I like to pretty up everything I use, so I added this cute little doily here, some double stick ribbon, which is awesome, I love this stuff, washi tape, and then used a gold pen to add some little flourishes here, so just trying to make it pretty. And I put on the front one of my favorite pieces of scripture because this scripture is one that really kind of helped me out when I was really in a seeking mode and just so doubtful and unsure. And it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And so that for me was really just a way of God saying, yes, it's going to take some time. But if you just keep seeking, I promise that I'm going to show myself to you. So then when I turn that page, I just have a if found, please return here. And then Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. I'm not going to read it, but I really highly recommend you go and check out Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. It's perfect for in your war binder. And then over here, I got this drawing off of Pinterest. If you have seen the war binder I made for my boyfriend for his birthday. I will link that down below if you haven't, but I made a very similar page for him with a hobbit door, and for me it's a little bit more girly, and so it says, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, and then I drew Warbinder at the bottom. And then following that, I have Prayer to Hear God's Spirit. I just got this off of Google. Uh, it basically is just saying, all right, God, here I am, I'm in your presence, I'm seeking you, so just help me to not hesitate or be afraid. Let me abandon myself and just give myself over to this time and really just embrace the time that I'm spending in my war binder. So I thought this was a really great prayer to have at the beginning, and all of this stuff I have in the beginning is really just to kind of get me in the right mindset before I delve into my different sections of the war binder. And then the last thing I have at the beginning of my war binder is this little key card. We actually get these at church. Uh, I go to Glad Tidings Church, church, and they are a decently big church, and so they give out key cards that fit into the different messages or relate to a certain sermon series, that kind of thing. And we actually did a whole series on War Room, Prayer is a Powerful Weapon, and that actually, that series is what introduced me to the movie that inspired the War Binder, but also what introduced me, of course, to War Binders, and then once I fell down the rabbit hole of Pinterest looking at War Binders and YouTube, it was a done deal, I had to make one. And on the front, of that card, it has Matthew 6.6, 6, which says, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And I think that's a really important thing to remember. So, obviously a lot of us, we're out here, we're on YouTube, we're sharing our war binders. Oh, look how pretty it is, look at all the pretty foil papers I use and all the washi tape and isn't it lovely, but I really want everybody who's watching this to remember that even though for me art is a form of my expression of my love for God and for life, that's not the only way to worship Him and it really is a private affair. So you could do this with something as simple as a notebook, just in the privacy of your room, close the door, writing letters to God and it doesn't matter because it's not about the form that your worship, your prayer, your scripture study takes. It's just that you're engaging with God and you're developing a relationship. So please do keep that in mind when you're going across Pinterest and seeing all of these gorgeous prayers and things that people are writing out and creating these really lovely uh, illustrated faith, Bible journaling, all of that stuff is great and beautiful and a wonderful way 
to show your appreciation to God, but it's not the only way. And it certainly does not mean that one person's love for God is greater than another's because they choose to reflect it in different lights. So that is my little sermon message for the day in regards to that. But now I'm going to jump into my different sections of my war binder. So I made these little cover pages or dividers for all of my sections. I have scripture, Bible study, prayer, worship and praise, as well as my sermon notes at the back there. And essentially the way I made these is I got this awesome paper, also from Recollections at Michael's, and it's called, here if I can bring it out, it's called Color Splash by Recollections and it's Resist Paper Pad. And the paper looks like this to start. And there's these little kind of gold and clear flourishes that are in there, but you can't tell they're there until you use watercolor or some kind of medium to paint over it. And so I thought this paper was super cool. I got it for like 70% off, and so I thought it would be great, because it's nice and sturdy too, to use for my dividers. So I basically just cut it to the right size, and then made sure in cutting it that I left a little bit on the edge to use for the tab and then had a different tab at a different space each time down. If you are interested in seeing perhaps a video on how to make tabs for your war binder, I could do that, um, but I don't want to get into it too much here. But that's what I did, and then I watercolored it and added some different stickies and rub-ons and things along the way. So my first one is scripture. And then I have this cute little card, which I got at Hobby Lobby. It comes on a 12 by 12 sheet, and I just cut them out. And then I have this here, the Word of God is Living and Active, from Hebrews 4.12. And obviously that is so perfectly fitting for a scripture section. And I actually got this from this book that my boyfriend's mom gave me. I can get it out here. It looks like this. It's 100 illustrated Bible verses, inspiring words, beautiful art, and it has really beautiful illustrations of different pieces of scripture, which I then, of course, proceeded to cut up and take apart so that I could put them in my war binder. So I don't know if that's like kind of unholy to have done that, but I really liked some of the illustrations in here, and some of the pieces of scripture just fit so perfectly with different sections of my war binder that I wanted to put them in here. You can see here and then made sure I had the holes lined up in all of that. So you'll see those throughout. And then this I also got from Pinterest and basically it is just a list of ways to go about reading scripture and starting to understand it. So that is something I try and do in my scripture section. I've just done a few scriptures, especially because I've been starting to practice hand lettering as well. Something I'm trying to get into more. So. I've just done a few. As you can see here, that's one of those cards that I have up in the front that I put in. And so it's something I just enjoy doing in my free time. Um, this is one that I watercolored. And then I attempted to start doing a monthly scripture study and admittedly it didn't work out too well because at the same time I've been trying to apply to grad schools and that's really been taking a lot of my attention and focus. And so I tried to do the Open My Eyes September from FelicityB.com. FelicityB.com has a ton of awesome monthly scripture studies just like this one that you can print out and stick in your war binder. And even if you don't like hers particularly, there are tons of them out there. So just check out Pinterest, type in scripture monthly study and all sorts of ones will come up for whatever month you're searching for. So I was doing September and I did two of them. So I did day one and then day two here. And my plan is to just continue doing the rest. I really want to finish the one that I started and I'm gonna just do that on my own time. And I think that is something that I have had to come to understand and something I encourage everyone else to come to understand too. It really does happen on your own time, so I don't want people to feel discouraged when they see everybody online 
doing their monthly devotional and every single day they say that they sit down for an hour with the Lord and write down their devotionals and write down scriptures and their prayers and every single day they spend that time with God. That's amazing if they do that and I think that is wonderful and I love that there are people out there who get to spend that time with God. But that doesn't have to be the case for everyone and it doesn't mean if you're not doing that that you're a bad Christian. You're not living up to your potential as a holy woman. So please just know that for yourself that you can do this on your own time. If you have to skip a day of your scripture writing, that's fine. You know, you can pray to God on your way to work in the car. That honestly is the way that I've been doing most of my time with God has not been through my war binder this past month, but has been just when I have some free time in the car, before bed, whatever it is, that's when I pray to him, when I worship him, etc. So yes, I have only done two days of September and eventually I'm going to do the other 28, but for now, that's where I'm at right now with my scripture study and that is perfectly okay with me. And then I hop right into my Bible study. And so in here is where I put my devotional pages. And so the Be Positive, Be Grateful, Live an Abundant Life actually comes in the Recollections scripture insert that you can buy. And this is what the scripture um, devotional pages look like within the insert you can buy. It has today's focus at the top, notes, thoughts, questions along the bottom here. I am grateful for, written around this little box, and then today's scripture on the side here. And so it's a really nice setup that fits most devotional studies you're going to find in stores. So the devotional I use um, currently is Quiet Moments Alone with God, a devotional for women by Emily Barnes. And I really like this devotional. I uh, highly recommend it, especially for newer Christians like myself, because it's very simple and straightforward and is really easy to just kind of do in a few minutes at the beginning of every day or at the end of the day. And so I just do or try to do one a day. Once again, there are days where I skip, where I'm sick, or something happens and I just don't get to it, and that's perfectly fine, but I do try to do one every day. And so this is a great book. Um, there's lots of devotional books out there, so you can just easily search for those on Amazon or your local bookstore, but that's the one I use. And so I just use these pages every day, and I use my pink and purple pen that I kind of use exclusively in my war binder. You can see they're right here. And then uh, every now and then I'll insert one of those scripture drawings from that book I showed you. Uh, this one, We Are the Clay and You Are Our Potter from Isaiah 64 8 actually was the topic of this devotional. And so when I figured that out, I wanted to take this out and put it in here with it. So these are just all of my different ones. I try and play around with my fonts and you know make the pages pretty but that's once again just my way of kind of really committing to that time with God is to have fun with it and to make it crafty because that's something I really enjoy and so I'm just gonna skip through those that's all the ones I have so far here's an example of what it looks like when it's blank and I just use these little clothespins you could use paperclip whatever a bookmark um, to mark where I'm currently at so that I don't have to do all that flipping. I can just turn right to the page that I'm currently at for the devotional. So then I jump into my prayer section. So admittedly this section I've not been using as much as I would like to. I do find a lot of value in writing down my prayers. I am a writer so the written word is really a place where I feel like I'm best expressing myself but I have been for the most part praying just whenever I'm available to pray <laughs> and whenever it just comes to mind. So whether that's at the dinner table or in bed, whatever, that's when I've been praying and in those times my war binder is not readily accessible to me. So I haven't been writing them down as much as I would like. But I've been trying to use the Axe method of prayer and basically this is just 
something that is out there on Pinterest. I do not know who the original person who made this setup for prayer is, but the idea is that you first focus on adoration. So tell God how wonderful he is, worship him, thank him for everything that's going right in your life. I think too often, for me especially, it's something I need to work on, we just jump right into our requests. Like, God, why is this happening to me? Or why is my bank account so low? Like, can you please help me out? Like, help me to get a great job. Help me to get into these grad schools I'm applying to. And it's all about, you know, me, me, me. What can you do for me next? Rather than appreciating what he's already done for you. So that is something I really need to work on is adoration first. First and foremost, put him first and all that he has already done. Then confession, so admitting your sins, letting him know that you understand that you are broken and you're in need of forgiveness because we're all human and that is kind of the definition of human, honestly. Then is thanksgiving, so say thank you for all God has done in your life. And so I've kind of tied those two together, but it gets the point across. And then finally is supplication. So that is where you can make your request to God for yourself and of course for others as well because it's not all about me it's about everyone in my life and beyond my life and so because of that I have actually divided my prayer section up into three different sections people have done far more than that it is up to you uh, some people like to have a different section for like every family member so if you're like a wife and you have five children, you might have one for your husband and all five children and their spouses, etc. Um, but for me, I'm just a single lady with friends and family, and so I'm not single, that's a lie. I have a boyfriend, but I'm not married is my point. So my first section is prayers for myself. Let your faith be bigger than your fears. One of those uh, prayer cards I got from Hobby Lobby again. And then these pages, thoughts and prayer requests. Uh, come in the recollections scripture insert as well. And so they're just simple pages where you can jot down any thoughts and then if you have a prayer request from somebody, you can put that there. Uh, and then my next section is prayers for friends and family. And so on the back of that I wrote, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Obviously very fitting for a friends and family section. So I'm going to skip over that. These are all the empty pages, so once again, that closed pin to kind of direct me to the next section of it. And then here I have, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. And so this, of course, is my section where I like to pray for my enemies. My next section is then praise and worship. And so here is where I like to do... A few different things in which I've made sections for. So this first one says, come let us sing to the Lord. And this, for me, is where I'm going to put uh, different worship songs that I like. So at church one day, we had this song that they sung, and it had these lyrics said, I am still, I am quiet, I am yours. And I really liked those lyrics, and it was just a beautiful song. And so I made this page devoted to that. And so my hope is to kind of do that sort of thing in the future as well. And then my next section is something that's a little different that I haven't seen thus far in other people's war binders, but I really wanted for myself. And that is a section kind of devoted to the beauty of the natural world that God has created for us. So I have Psalm 42.1. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And so I found this really beautiful uh, Psalm 19, 1 through 6, that really, to me, kind of talked about just how the heavens proclaim the glory of God. And that got me to thinking about how every time I look at the sky, especially a beautiful sunset or sunrise, I am just overcome with how beautiful God and his creation is, and so I wanted to do this page devoted to that. And then this is just a picture I had taken of a tree in which, you know, it looked kind of desolate, but it's just so beautiful in its desolation at the same time. Uh, I love the look of bare trees, and so I put that in here as well, just because why not? Um, and the idea of this is that I will fill this section over time with different 
things, whether drawings or photos or just thoughts or descriptions of beautiful things I see in God's creation. That's the idea anyways. And then my last section for this is my gratitude section. So I just have a gratitude list that I fill in every now and then. I don't use it as often because I do gratitude logs in my planner, which kind of takes the place of this, but every now and then I will write down something I'm grateful for, um, specifically in terms of my feelings for God. And then my last section is my sermon notes. So. Where it ends, when faith in God begins, it's another one of those little cards. And then this is one of those pages again, and it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And I really, really, really like this scripture for my uh, sermon section because going to church every Sunday is not a normal thing in our world. Unfortunately, it's very sad because I am uplifted every Sunday and feel as though I'm just ready to go head on towards my week and it really just prepares me and gets me in the right mindset every week and so I encourage everyone to find a great church go to it regularly every Sunday if you can you miss one or two you know not the end of the world it's fine but uh, it's just so uplifting and like I said unfortunately is not that common in our world today and so my idea here was you know, I don't want to conform to that norm. Sorry for the lame rhyme there. But I really want to transform my mind. And sometimes in order to find transformation, you need to step outside of what is normal and typical and what everyone else around you is doing. And if going to church is one of those things, then we need to find comfort in God and know that there's a reason we're pursuing him. So that is why I have that scripture there. And then, yep, so here again is one of those key cards. If God is for us, who can be against us? And I love this key card because that is the first scripture that I memorized. And that's the whole point of my church giving out these key cards is they're, they call them memory verses. And the idea is that whatever is on the key card is a verse that we should try to commit to memory. And so that is a great one, Romans 8.31b. And speaking of my church, I just want to briefly plug in that if you are struggling to find a church near your home that really suits you and your family's needs, there are a lot of options now available thanks to technology online as well. I know that Glad Tidings, my church, actually post videos and films their videos live online and so I'm gonna leave a link down to that below if you want to check it out um, I personally really love their services it may not be for everyone but if you are feeling that that is a need you are trying to fulfill in your life I really do highly recommend that maybe you try and check them out one Sunday and just see what their sermons are about and if it's something that interests you so my sermon notes, this is what they look like. This is also a page that you get in the Recollections scripture insert. So it's for topical study. And so you just write the topic at the top and then the scriptures that that sermon dealt with that day, whatever observations you have, and then the application. So how am I going to apply what I've learned to my own life? And so I do those every day at church. As you can see there's another one of those key cards we did recently a death to selfie series which was fun and god we trust we did uh, around 9 11. so that was a great series and then our current series if you are in fact interested in checking out gt is unknown uh, which we're looking at unexplored stories and their infinite truths so last year around the same time we were looking at the really legendary stories of the Bible. And so this year, the idea is that we're going to focus on those lesser known stories of the Bible and what powerful infinite truths they convey. So that's what we've been working on. And there you can see what the page looks like when it's blank. And then this last section I have here um, within my kind of 
sermon notes section is a place where I put any kind of studies whether they be related to Christian books that I'm reading or online sermons that I watch from other institutions that kind of thing I put in this section and so I have again one of those scriptures from that book I showed you this one is take firm hold of instruction don't let her go keep her for she is your life and obviously so so fitting and so so true uh, I really think it's difficult I know for me it's difficult to feel connected to God if I'm not constantly learning about him and one way I've begun to overcome my doubts is to just continuously get into not only the word but also other people's understandings of the word I think is so helpful so one of my favorites is a day in the word this is produced by John Jorgensen on YouTube so I will of course link him down below one of my all-time favorite youtubers he vlogs every single day every single day which is amazing uh, except Sundays and he is a Christian speaker and he does these great a day in the words uh, studies once a week but he also has a lot of spoken words and different sermons that he does at various churches and schools and um, camps and things that he's invited to so I really highly recommend you check out his channel once again the link will be down below all right Whew. I am sorry this video is probably crazy long but thank you thank you thank you if you kept with it up until this point I I guess I'll really quickly talk about the back here since I know you're probably wondering uh, this is my letters to God section and so it's just a envelope uh, piece of stationery that I double sticky taped onto here and then I have these uh, papers they're so beautiful my best friend got them for me from Italy uh, that match the envelope to go inside and the idea of having a letters to God envelope in your war binder or prayer journal faith journal whatever you want to call it is to have a place that is more private obviously if somebody really wants to read them they could open it up just as I can open it up it doesn't have like a secret pin lock or anything on it but it's nice to have a place where you feel like you can be totally alone with God in terms of your thoughts and requests and so this letters to God section is really reserved for times in which I'm just overcome with emotion and a need for God that I need to write it all out and have that relationship develop in my words uh, to him and once again he sees everything that happens behind closed doors and so this is just me and him 100 percent i don't mind showing all of the rest to you know you guys and my boyfriend whoever wants to see it not a big deal i open this at church all the time if you see stuff it doesn't matter too much to me but my letters to god is supposed to be private and just for me and so i do recommend you try and have a section like that as well Whew, I am, yeah, I'm really sorry. This video is probably crazy long, but we have made it. That is my warbinder, guys. I am so thankful that so many of you guys were so interested in seeing my warbinder. And I hope it lived up to your expectations and that you did enjoy it. And I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye!